Hello beautiful Pisces gang, welcome to my channel The Intuitive Teacup. So happy to have all the Pisces up in the house with me. Happy birthday guys. Uh, hope hope this, uh, this video finds you all well during your solar return, your birthday. All right, so uh, we are here to do your monthly March readings here on YouTube. They are going to be general readings. That means not everything I say will resonate with all the Pisces out there. Ultimately, it is up to you guys to come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind. Ultimately, I ask for you to only take away the messages that serve you in some capacity, that resonate, inspire, motivate you, confirm something you wanted to hear, or challenge you to, to receive a message that maybe is difficult, but again, needed, needed to be heard. Um, it is up to you to only take away those messages that resonate um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, to drop and release the rest. If it doesn't serve you in some way, drop it like it's hot. Have faith that it is a message for someone else who needs to hear it. Um, what else do you need to know? Everything else is in the description box below. That is going to include my social media channels. I'm the Intuitive Teacup on Facebook, Instagram, and .com. Uh, also, the decks I'm using here today, all that is going to be listed in the description box below for you. Um, that's about it. I'm just going to do a few more shuffles to get all my cards out. Bear with me, Pisces. Thank you for all the love and support. As always, I ask for you to like, share, subscribe wherever you can, simply because it helps this channel grow. It has to do with YouTube analytics. If I get more comments and more likes, YouTube will place this video in a, in a higher standing or some, some capacity so that people view it. Um, it is, it's not me being an egomaniac. So yeah, and it's a nice exchange of energy, right? It's a free reading. If you can like this video, if you like what you see in here, I would appreciate it. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. One more card for Pisces. <clears throat> I'm going to take two more. <clears throat> okay, let's do it. All right, so uh, bottom of your deck, you have the King of Wands, some nice fire energy, the King of Career, the King of Passion, the King of Spirituality. Uh, it's a fire king, right? Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. It is dominantly masculine energy. Um, the, that doesn't mean it couldn't be a female in your life. I am getting at someone older than you or someone who has... I heard executive power over you, so it could be your boss, particularly if you work for a fire sign, though it doesn't have to be. What's underneath that is this really beautiful energy. It's kind of a contradiction of like soulmate or even older sibling, child dynamic, parent child. And then <clears throat> this. Oh, interesting. You have two kings, although one of them I think is you. Yeah, whether you're male or female, water in itself is a feminine energy. So again, you can kind of toss gender out. It's not as significant. What's standing between these two kings, particularly if you are in a same-sex uh, relationship, though it doesn't have to be, particularly my males out there, there's heartbreak and indecision regarding a relationship that has lasted throughout the years and either someone has had a change of heart or a change of feelings, or you're just going through kind of like, you know, peaks and valleys. You may be going through sort of a difficult time, um, but the thing is you guys are facing each other. So this, this is saying to me, you both are looking each other in the eyes, you're standing toe to toe, it could be literally arguments, but it's also saying what's between you is love, but there's been some sort of mistake, there's been some sort of accident, it could have been third party stuff with the three of swords, but really it's just pain, it's someone feeling like they're not understood, or they're not getting the attention they need, or there's, yeah, it's, it's like these two people, I'm kind of wanting to pair it like this. This person is very sentimental and romantic, um, and they're staying in this relationship because almost like the time stamp, it's comfortable, it feels right. This person may be having feelings of insecurity and wanting to duck out or wanting to pursue other options. This person may have uh, been heartbroken because there was maybe some third party activity. But I don't know, this doesn't feel as severe as not being able to fix it or repair it. It just seems like yeah, there's an inability to move forward because you're fearing what will happen if you do, the repercussions of stepping forward to, to, to stand up for yourself, to... Yeah, it's, it, I am getting sort of stay silent, especially my Pisces out there with all your psychic abilities. You know something is wrong. It could be like the elephant in the room. It's like there's awkwardness between you and your romantic partner or your boss, but eh, maybe. Take it, take it and run with it if it's your story. Um, yeah, there, there's an avoidance to come and speak the truth, but in that avoidance of, of co confronting someone, you're sinking deeper and deeper into a state of like anxiety, a mental prison, negative thoughts keeping you trapped. 
I think what you're anticipating being a difficult or scary situation, it's not as bad as you're anticipating, but by not moving forward, it, there's, you're sinking deeper and deeper. And there is a sense of isolating yourself from this person. If, if there hasn't been any sort of like argument or, uh, yeah, like something that abruptly kind of put a wedge in the relationship, this person also senses that you, Pisces, you're acting kind of funny, but they can't quite put their finger on it. But they are very intuitive as well. So like they know there's something off, but it's like, I get it. I want to keep wanting to say the elephant in the room. No one's addressing it. Um, your king of wands, Aries, Aries, Leo, Sag, potentially, may have made some sort of executive decision about the relationship or about their career or about just the circumstance or situations that put you in an uncomfortable spot that painted you in a corner, especially if it's like, I got a job in New York, so I guess we're moving to New York. And you're just like, what? It's that type of like awkwardness, but there needs to be a conversation. It's something about there's a growing distance between you and it does feel like it was started potentially by the fire king. Um, and you're, you're feeling the pain and sorrow from it. This person may also be, it's funny, I'm sort of getting a duality here. Maybe it's a Gemini. A, a duality of like they sense something is up, but they also have no idea how much you took it to heart. It could even be something as simple as they said something and you, you sort of twisted their words or misinterpreted it in a way where it, it really hurt you. But again, you didn't come right out and tell them that they did something wrong. So yeah, it does feel like you guys are not on the same page right now. All right, we're going to hop into your actual reading here. <clears throat> so you have the Empress, the Seven of Cups, and the Three of Wands. Okay, let me just digest this for a second here. <clears throat> yeah, you are overwhelmed by the options of moving forward, or the, I'm sorry, the potential outcomes of moving forward towards your, I do want to say your King of Wands, though it, it could also be someone who has strong Taurus or Libra in their chart. You're afraid that your words or your feelings will be misconstrued. And so it's, there is a very much two of swords energy here. There's an avoidance, as I said, to, to come out, to come forward and, and speak your mind and speak your truth. You have become trapped in a mental prison for yourself. And I am getting, again, your person, particularly if they are a Sagittarius, they have no clue. They have no idea that you feel this way. They sense that something about you is off. They may think, for my ladies out there, they may think, oh, they're, you know, they're on their period. They're just kind of, you know, they're extra moody or they're a little emotional. They have no idea that it, it was very likely you being hurt or upset about something they did. So give them the benefit of the doubt that they probably didn't mean to hurt you or impact you the way that they did. Now, that's not for everybody. If your king of wands is cheating or doing like side activity, Obviously, that is going to have a negative repercussion like that. Like, let's call a spade a spade. So I'm, if that's the case, they that's more the story of they have no idea that, you know, that's sort of like that. Um, yeah, kind of knight of wands needing to like, you know, sow their wild oats. They didn't think they would be caught. And this could also represent them being in like. <clears throat> like having their tail between their legs when you come out and have the conversation, this could also represent, represent them feeling like they've entrapped themselves. It's like, yeah, it's something about the metaphor of setting a trap and then they fell right into it. That could be you, Pisces, kind of scheming how you're going to get the truth out of them because, yeah, there's, there's a distance between you guys, but you definitely feel like the fire king or fire person has done you wrong, has done you dirty. There's different levels of severity there, but this is saying, remember your value and your worth. If someone is, is disrespecting you or not treating you like the empress, that's a sign that they're probably not a good fit for you. And even if this is a long-term thing, if this is a marriage, and it might be with two kings and, and yeah, like the soulmate, Six of cards, past nostalgia. This could have been someone you've been with for 10 years. Yeah, it, there's something about if they're not treating you with respect anymore, it might be because they found options elsewhere. But this is also saying that you may be jumping to conclusions. The idea of illusion or lunacy uh, with this kind of like Piscean energy, you may be jumping to conclusions that whatever they're doing, you know, you have in your mind, they're cheating. There's another person. There's this, there's that. It might not be. It might be that, you know, 
I don't know, like they, they came home late because they, they took like a walk or, or they took an alternate route home. And yeah, be careful that you're not jumping to conclusions and thinking irrationally. Um, I, I just keep wanting to hammer that home. But yeah, it, it's like you and your person are at odds. What's between you is the seven of cups. So illusion, indecision, options, emotional risk. So again, you coming forward and being very truthful with your person, like, hey, you hurt my feelings. I need to talk about this with you. It's not that they won't be receptive. I, I, there is a part of this, though. They, they're, I almost said they're dumb. I'm sorry. They're not dumb, but they are, they're just not understanding why, why you took their words the way you did or why it hurt you. This person is probably very blunt. Uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. They're very blunt, right? It's, yeah, they, they move like fire. They get over things very quickly. You, Pisces, you're more feminine. You're more receptive. You take things to heart. So again, fire and water on, at, on occasions can be a tricky dynamic. So peaks and valleys. That doesn't mean this relationship is doomed. But by not coming forward to speak, no one's gaining anything from that. What's going on in your subconscious? The lovers and the devil, yeah. Something toxic has slipped in, in in between you guys. As I say, peaks and valleys, and what's between you is a peak, but it's like you're both in the valley, if that makes sense. For, for my Angelinos, do you literally live in the valley? Um, let's see. Valley girl. <laughs> this may involve a Capricorn. Your person could be a Capricorn or a Gemini. But really, you have a decision to make about the devil in your life. Is the devil representing you and toxic behavior? your pattern to quickly jump to conclusions or thoughts that again they're not based in truth or reality the truth the sword is pointed down it's not vibing high it's not channeling messages from source from above from a light from a greater universe yeah it's getting overwhelmed and and your thoughts cluttering up your mind where there's confusion there's illusion there's there's some lunacy there <clears throat> Something about taking off the mask and seeing what is really before you, that may have to do with your person, especially if you've, you've been with this person a long time. Please don't freak out, but have you truly outgrown this person? Is this someone you want to continue to be a soulmate with? Is this someone you want to walk the path together for the rest of your life? Or is there some sort of important decision that you're avoiding that you're putting off, that you're waiting on because you don't want to face the very harsh truth. You'd rather be blindfolded. You'd rather wear the mask so that you don't have to like look, down, look the devil in the eye and come to some sort of understanding that the person you chose or the decision you made, maybe it was with someone that didn't have good intentions. Maybe it was with someone who was deceitful, who was, in a sense, was the illusionist, was sort of like the, the uh, master manipulator in a sense. It's almost... It's almost you've been putting them on a pedestal when you take them down, when you take the mask off, when you take the blindfold off, whether that's you seeing with clarity, with vision, or it's them removing the guise of kind of like this peacocking masculine energy. It doesn't have to be male, but I hope you're with me here. When you, when you take off the mask, it, it whittles down to just the bare bones of who this person is, and it's asking, do you like this person? And your subconscious that's sort of what's going on. You know you have to face a difficult truth about the person you've been walking a path with. It's almost like, do you want to continue walking down this path? And if you do, with them, sorry, walking down the path with them. If you do, that's fine, but no, it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows all the time. It's not always going to be a cakewalk, right? Uh, some of you might be bakers, <laughs> the cakewalk. Um, there are going to be moments that challenge the relationship, and it's almost like as a separate entity, you two together versus the devil that's trying to like, again, pull you guys into a darker headspace. Are you gonna let the devil win or are you guys gonna get on the same team and like fight the darkness together? One of you may have gone through some sort of health scare and it's like you were there to heal each other, but it's like once that person was in the clear with their health, there was a lot of baggage or damage that sort of came to the surface of the relationship. And yeah, it's like you guys are sort of at, at a stare down. You're at a showdown of, are we going to communicate? I feel like you're giving them the silent treatment, Pisces. This is someone you love, though. This is someone who, who you, again, you hold them in very high regard. But with that, you may have put them on a pedestal. This person is not perfect. This person is flawed. Even, even to the degree of if they did cheat, if they did do that, I'm not condoning that. That's not my position to do. This is your life, Pisces. 
But with that, are you willing to consider them based on the actions that they've already taken? It's sort of like, again, assessing what's in front of you, the facts, the, uh, the data, the, like the substance of what's there, warts and all, you know, devil energy and all, the things we're not proud of, the mistakes we've made. It's analyzing it and assessing it. Is this worth my emotions? Is this worth my energy? Is it worth my time? Do I want to keep meeting cups or you understand what I'm saying? Like, do I want to keep <clears throat> kind of navigating around this person in my life, even though they've kind of put me in an uncomfortable position? They've put me in an uncomfortable spot. That was, there was like a weird sexual metaphor in there too. I don't know if there's trouble in the bedroom or what's going on there. Anyway, let's look at uh, your past. So in your past, you have the emperor and the hanged man. So again, some very fiery, strong, dominant, traditional masculine energy. This can also represent your father. It can also represent your boss or you being in like career mode. <clears throat> I am sort of getting that it is tied to this masculine fire sign. It could also be a female, but if that's the case, they are the one who is very headstrong. They sort of like, they sort of take the lead in terms of where the romantic relationship is going, whether you like that or not. That's what I'm saying. It's like they get a job in New York and, and they're like, well, I guess we're moving to New York. They're less considerate of your feelings. They're the one driving the relationship when it should be 50-50. They meet, and you, meet you in the middle. There's equal give and take to this. In the past, this person has had control issues and it may stem from an issue with their childhood, particularly their mother. You do have a divine pairing here. So there's absolutely potential and for success to, for these people to be on the same page. But I just keep getting, they need to treat you better, Pisces. It's like they turn your world upside down. They expect you to turn, turn your world upside down to meet their, it's not their standard, it's to keep up with them. They're not considerate of your feelings. I, I just sort of keep getting that. <clears throat> This person may be very career focused to the point where it puts you at odds. You feel like they never have time or energy for you. And it, it sort of feels like they feel like they have something to prove. And particularly with like a parental relationship, they may have been talked down to all their life. They may not have a good relationship with their parents. And so it's like they're trying to overcompensate to prove to you, to themselves, to their coworkers that that they are the boss, that they are the strongest one in the room, they have the most energy and drive, and but it's coming off as exhausting. Um, yeah, like their heart isn't in the right place. With you, I don't sense that they have anything to prove to you other than that they love you and that they're there for you. And, and yet they're leaving you kind of like, wait a minute, I thought this was my person, but... Yeah, I mean, you're, I think you want to, to rekindle, to revive something with them, but right now, it's, it's posing challenges, isn't it? They, they really hurt you. They did some damage on you. And I think it would take a lot of time for them to gain back your, um, to gain back your trust, to gain back your willingness to participate in this relationship, to, to kind of hit reset. It feels like, yeah, the Knight of Pentacles, the slowest moving knight in the deck, reliable. He'll get the job done. But yeah, I, I'm just sensing your person kind of made a mistake. I'm sorry that this is leaning so heavily towards romance. I just, I'm reading the cards for what they are. This might relate to someone you're working with or, or your boss or, or a coworker, but for most of you, it does feel like because you have like soulmate energy coming up. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit tricky, Pisces. You might be dealing with a Virgo, but they are headed towards you. They are looking at you, but they're, it's almost like they've done something so severe. It's knocked them off their pedestal of like, this kind of peacocking, again, just very masculine machismo, like, yeah, there's like ego here, or just being very blunt, being lacking empathy, lacking consideration. They know that they've screwed up because this has been a habit they've had in the past of, again, they turn your world upside down for their benefit, you know, to, to achieve everything that they want to create. Yeah, they've, they've been putting you on the back burner or just been dismissive of your feelings and your emotions. It's almost like they've been knocked down from the, the position of the king in metaphor to a knight that slowly has to work its way back to earn Pisces' trust again. Again, being fooled, being tricked, something about an illusion. Again, I think you're giving them the silent treatment, but this person doesn't respond well to that. They know something is up, but it's like you almost need to spell it out for them because they're not getting it. 
If they need to repair this relationship and you truly believe it's all on them, that they're in the wrong, I, I would maybe communicate that because right now you're not and you're sinking deeper into this overwhelmed feeling. <clears throat> Yeah, in the past, this person may have struggled with money or they may have grown up in a household where money was very tight. And so, again, they feel like they need to overcompensate and live live sort of very lavishly and surround themselves by material, materialistic type things. And I'm just sensing for a lot of my Pisces out there, that really doesn't mean much to you. I think you want security. You want to feel like you're not strapped for cash, but ultimately money isn't your main goal with this person. And in the past anyway, that seemed to very much be a focus for them. And it could have gone in terms of like you lending them money or vice versa. They may hold that against you because maybe if you don't have as much money, it might be like you guys live together, but there's like a weird, yeah, there's like a weird wedge in the relationship because of issues regarding money. Someone may have lost a job. I'm sorry, Pisces, my camera froze. So yeah, something about money is also driving a wedge in the relationship. It may also have to do with inheritance or a family income. They may have felt like they were um, like left, not left out of the will, but money that was owed to them or due to them, they didn't get. And that left them kind of bitter or, or jealous or spiteful. And I don't necessarily think it has to do with you. But yeah, there's other stuff kind of bleeding into this relationship. It's making it messy. You may have had a chance to go after some sort of career opportunity or a gig or a job that you were excited about, but they left you hanging in terms of, it's almost like you were seeking permission to go and do it, and you may have not. You may have put your own career on the back burner for them, only to realize that they really don't prioritize you or your feelings or your dreams or your desires. So this really is saying to me, really look at the data, the history of what has been in this relationship is it something you really want to work on and save? Or are you, are you overly romanticizing this because you have a history together? Because, yeah, there's a sense of nostalgia and, and comfortability. You know each other, right? But with that, if you're not growing, and the Empress desires growth always, right? She is Mother Earth. She is Mother Nature. The baby grows inside of her. If you've reached a point where something has stopped growing, how, how do we mix up the ingredients to, to get it right? So what are your goals? Strengthening bonds. Okay, so I very much sense that you still like or love this person quite a bit, but you're, you're growing weary of carrying around that uh, mental, emotional, physical baggage, constantly feeling like you're the one trying to repair it, trying to save it, trying to gather up all the wands, all the sticks, and salvage what is left. Where are they in this picture? Why aren't they helping you? You're the one who's the most burdened by this. This is sort of saying to me, though, you've committed yourself to this person, maybe through marriage, but that doesn't mean it's a life sentence. Something about the idea of being in prison, being in jail, for one or two of you, that might ring true. Your person may have done some time for, like, misdemeanors, especially if they're a Sagittarius. I don't know why that's coming through, but anyway. You're being guided to move forward to the light. I don't know if that has to do with a Leo. And yeah, some of you may have also lost someone in your family, and I'm by no means predicting this. But yeah, someone who is very close to you, like a maternal figure, an aunt, a mother, a grandmother, they watch over you and they don't want you struggling in this relationship anymore. They don't want you feeling like every day is a burden, every day is a fight. They want to help. They're in, like, I don't know who or what this is, a guardian angel, a spirit guide. They're asking you to release something that is causing you more pain and sorrow than good. And it might be this person. All right, Pisces, sorry about that. We're back. Yeah, so like a spirit guide, an angel, someone who watches over you, though I am sort of getting uh, not in this realm, like not in the 3D, the 5D, something more like universe, God, spirit. They're trying to draw you towards the light. They don't want you to keep trying to fix something that's, that's broken, especially if this is like, again, something about your number 10, or you've been going at it time and time again, and it's not getting any easier. It's almost time to drop it and then focus on the one. Focus on your own growth, focus on your own passions, on your own creativity, on your own spirituality. You may sort of be limiting yourself to thinking this is your one and only person. And I'm just sort of getting it's not true. Uh, let's see what's coming into you. A page of swords. Okay, so a communication and then simply love. 
even with the six, the idea of the soulmate, uh, the six of cups, um, going back to the past, nostalgia, sentimentality, offering forgiveness not only to others, but to yourself and understanding, as I was saying, you are a different person now than you were six years ago, than you were 10 years ago. The number six might be important to you, and I want to say it has to do with the sixth house of the zodiac. So maybe you're dealing with a Virgo. Yeah, a Virgo from the past may be communicating with you, but I don't think it's your king of wands. That would be someone new. It would be someone you were friends with in childhood. You might be hearing from them. And as I said, they want you to go towards the light. Yeah, that, that may represent someone else trying to come in that's going to, at minimum, offer you wisdom and guidance and insight, particularly if you have a parent who is a Virgo. There's someone you can lean on and trust, especially if your parent is a Virgo and has passed on. Again, they're trying to send you messages of communication, offer you moral support and guidance, wisdom. Make sure you are open to, to receiving those important downloads and messages in your dreams and, and, and in, your, in your intuition. Emotionally, you'll feel it when this person is trying to communicate with you. If you are dealing with a Virgo, <clears throat> or if your fire king has strong Virgo in their chart, I don't know why I'm being drawn to say that. It could also be a Scorpio too. You, you may end up getting some sort of communication uh, from this person who is your, you know, your, your soulmate, your six of cups, your nostalgia person, the person you've been with for a long time, but again, it got kind of weird and uncomfortable. They may offer a page type communication, a small, hey, is everything okay? But again, it's a page. It's not a skilled communicator. It's not an effective message that really gets to the bottom of things, but it is trying to shine a light on how much things have changed, how much things have grown and developed. And so I think it's going to be a conversation again of do we want to grow and develop together or do we want to cut it, right? The, the sword can be a weapon as well. <clears throat> Some Again, something about a tumultuous relationship with a parent, particularly, yeah, I mean, it, does, it could go either way, mother or father, it doesn't matter. Again, how I was saying for you or your person, there may be a lot of baggage there that someone is feeling like they need to overcompensate because as a child, they were always treated as inferior or not good enough. <clears throat> Particularly if your person is a Leo, that is coming up quite strongly here. And, and maybe that's a discussion that one or both of you is going to have even in counseling, even in therapy, if you guys choose to take it that route. It's trying to get back to the basics to just simply love. How do we get this pure and sweet and innocent again? So how do you see yourself? <clears throat> the Knight of Swords. <clears throat> Believe and succeed. Yeah, you're looking to push forward the communication. You're looking to go places. Fastest moving night in the deck. But what's interesting, it's like internally, I think you want to, it's almost like argumentative. You want to yell and scream at this person and tear them a new one because they really hurt you, right? With these cards, they really put you in an uncomfortable position, literally, right? Are you having to bail them out of jail? It could be something like that. Yeah, it's like they stained or spoiled their reputation. So, I mean, it's almost like the falling of a king, a forgotten king. Some of you might be leaving this person. <clears throat> I think you want to come at them and communicate everything you want to say. And yet, you're still kind of struggling. But you, as you see yourself, you see yourself as moving forward, trying to bring action, change, movement to this, and essentially move on. You want some sort of success. Now, for a lot of you, I think you want to move on with your person. Um, this very much has like Six of Swords energy to me. It's like learning important and valuable lessons. And that's ultimately what all this sword energy is. It doesn't have to be the ending of a relationship. But my goodness, it's difficult. Like you guys are going through it. This feels uncomfortable and heavy. But again, if, if someone were to come at it truthfully, even Knight of Swords gives me a little bit of pause because it, it is very... Um, it's moving with haste. It's getting that idea and moving on it immediately. It's not always thinking things through. It's acting on impulse. Try to be a high vibing King Pisces, again, male or female. Use emotional intelligence. You don't need to make a snap decision on what you want to do about this. Connect with your spirit guides, your angels, you know, faith, God, spirituality, religion. If that plays at all a key role in your life, spend time with those thoughts, those feelings, those, those, that in, those intuitive hits you're getting because that is what's going to drive you in the right direction. 
multiple cards of movement and what's interesting is how i was saying that person it's going to take them time to get back in your good graces to move towards you and get your your trust back they are ultimately moving in the same direction as you you both I heard you both want on this ship. You both want to progress and move forward past this awkward hurdle where again, there was, there was fear or misunderstanding or confusion or illusion. It's just like once they, you know, once they're back in the spotlight, right? In the sun, not, not the moon, the eclipse, the dark side. <clears throat> these knights could jump on board together, right? They could get back together. But what's really funny is you guys are presenting as the opposite of the elements you were prior. You're coming in with this mental energy, making a heart over head decision to, uh, as you move towards this fire king. The fire king, again, has kind of been knocked off his pedestal as, you know, creative. And I just kind of, I, I keep wanting to say like egomaniac, passionate, but again, kind of lusty energy. He's been taken down to like an earth knight, very slow, complete opposite speed as fire, like organic, over time, planting the seeds. It feels like, look, there's literally a wedge between you guys, but ultimately it's like, this ship is leaving, who's on board, who's going with me? And I do think it represents you. It, it's coming up and as you see yourself, you have your sights on the horizon, you have your sights on something or someone new. So it's almost like whether you or whether or not you guys choose to stay together, I think there's going to be a conversation about where you're headed to next. Again, discussing openly and honestly, things have changed. I've grown, you've grown. Do we want to make this work together? <clears throat> so let's clarify that because I already know that some of you are like, well, where do they stand? <clears throat> where does Pisces person stand? Do they want to continue to grow with them? The lovers. Well, I say, yeah, that's a yes. But again, this person, they may be being eclipsed by the illusion of they were my person since high school. We were high school sweethearts. Yes. But is that lack mentality? Are, are they going about it for the right reasons? Do they have strong Gemini in their chart, by the way? So yes, they see you as <clears throat> compatible. They see you as twins, right? But are they mistaking soulmates for <clears throat> codependency? Where does Pisces stand with this? Ultimately, if there's a conversation about moving forward together in the future, where does Pisces stand with this? And I mean, you know the answer already, don't you? <clears throat> where does Pisces stand with this? Or maybe you don't. Maybe it depends what your person will say. <clears throat> yeah, you have five of cups. I think this person did enough damage where you are seriously considering leaving them. Or at least like a trial separation. It, it's up to you, Pisces. I really do think you hold the power here because they, it seems like they made some sort of very harsh mistake. And I don't necessarily know if I'm predicting this. I, I don't do fear-based readings. I think you would know already if this was your story. But yeah, you're, you're kind of presenting as five of cups, which is like the total eclipse of the heart. If you take them back, I almost think it would be a fear of being alone. It would be a lack mentality of, well, this is my only person. I can't leave them because there's no one else out there. That's not true. Yeah, a lot of you have a Virgo or a Scorpio or a Leo coming in. <clears throat> How other people see you, leader and the seven of cups. They see you as confused, but they see you as eventually making a decision that is in alignment with your heart, with what you truly want. <clears throat> but they do see you as flip-flopping back and forth. Some days you're up and ready to leave and quit. Other days you sink back into, I, I, do, I, I don't want to say the safety zone the inability to make, make a decision. <clears throat> For those of you who are choosing to go after a new job, I think you are going to make the decision in Pisces season or you're going to start putting out applications or resumes. <clears throat> But yeah, I think some of you are going to choose to be alone for a while. And I, I know people hate hearing it, but I actually think that's a good choice for you. Even if that does involve leaving a relationship that was very much reliant on each other's income. I know that's a weird way to say it, but <clears throat> getting away from lack mentality that you have to be with this person because... X, Y, and Z. It's a lot of like, well, what if this happened? And what if that? Again, it's, it's dark thoughts. It's false thoughts. It's unhelpful, negative energy. You guys need to raise your vibration. Make any choice because ultimately, <clears throat> when you choose to release things that don't serve you, you're making room for new opportunities, for new blessings in your life. And again, if you're staying with this person and, and you choose to continue working with them, then don't hold on to the baggage. If you truly apologize, if you truly accept their apology or forgive them, don't keep emotionally, manip <clears throat> emotionally manipulating them 
and bringing the past up again and again and again. If you, if you truly come together and have that conversation and make the apology or, or make the promise to go in on this and try really hard to continue to grow together, again, like don't, don't hold things above their head. It, there, there's something about being true to your word, being a good leader, not having like this duality, this, this mentality or their ulterior motives type deal. <clears throat> it would be a poor choice to say something that you didn't mean. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I hope you do. It would be a poor choice to say something to this person that you don't actually mean. Advice or guidance. Challenging times, queen of swords. Yeah, making executive decisions, making decisions with authority uh, in, in good balance, um, in, a, in justice, right? Um, as I was saying, with the knight of swords, there's something here about making a decision in haste or, or ill-tempered, uh, regretting. It's, yeah, there's something very quick acting about this, but you're not doing it because it's, it's the right decision. You're doing it in the heat of the moment because you want change. This is saying really think it through long term. It's Libra energy. Make decisions with balance. <clears throat> Make decisions with integrity. You are going through it. Challenging time. I sense that. Even the five, it's like um, agents of change and chaos. This relationship, it's, it's really kind of it's breaking it down to its core of do we want to try and rebuild from what clearly was like a pretty difficult upset. I think a lot of you, when you, again, you start tapping into that higher vibration, is this what I really want or am I settling? Am I complacent? Am I really happy in this relationship? Have I settled for what is familiar, what I've always known? Am I avoiding starting anew because it's more difficult, because it's more scary? <clears throat> or does this cup represent the idea of trying to welcome new emotional fulfillment in what already is, to build on what we already have? Spend some time in nature, spend some time in water. If you have a friend who is an Aquarius, they may offer you a nice little like shoulder to cry on or someone who offers you advice or guidance. And because they are an air sign, it would be very logical. It would be very clear, precise, like um, blunt but necessary guidance that I think you really need to hear, Pisces, because in your head, you're letting your emotions get the best of you. You sort of need to step away from this mental, emotional confusion and kind of hit reset, spend a little bit of time by yourself, but also with maybe that one person, if you have a mother or a father or a sister or a best friend or whatever who's an Aquarius, they may be your, your guiding star. They may be your support system. This could also represent your counselor or your therapist, if that makes sense, your tarot reader. What is the potential outcome here? The Ace of Swords and the Prince of Swords. All right, cool. So Knight of Swords again, but it's coming in with a pure message. It's not coming in in haste and craziness and aggression and anger. It's coming in because you've thought about it and you've thought about where your emotions are at and how to heal going forward. Again, future thinking, the star. It's about the zoom out, thinking broader horizons, broader pictures. Do I want to stick it out and wait a little bit longer or do I want to start a brand new with someone else? The decision is yours, Pisces. There is no right or wrong answer because you're being asked to choose whatever fits your spiritual path moving forward. <clears throat> I love that this is coming through because ultimately it does end with a decision, with a, um, a communication, and it's, it's coming in both directions. There is progress and uh, forward movement on important ideas and communications. Yes, that's broad, but this is a general message, right? The communication comes, but I, I do sort of think that you need to play your, I don't even want to say play your chess piece because that makes it sound, again, like strategy. If you come at your person, the way that they are very blunt and sometimes talk down to you without even knowing it, without meaning to, it's okay to be blunt with your person because you, the damage has been done. Now it's time to like address the elephant in the room and be like, do you want to fix this with me or shall we cut it? They won't see it coming, but it's almost like they need something to jolt them and make them realize that they need to, they need to shape up. They haven't been treating you well. And, and I think the idea of losing you scares the shit out of them because they always think you're going to be there for them. You've always been there for them. It's all they've ever known. So what happens when you're no longer in the picture? It's going to be really challenging for them. And that's not your problem, Pisces. You, you don't need to fix them. 
Change, know when to move into a new shell, especially if yours no longer fits. I'm not even gonna pull another one because I think that says everything that you need to know, Pisces. Some of you might be dealing with a cancer as well. All right, last one, protection. Keep some aquamarine clothes. Mermaid's tears have been known to create uh, these precious gems. So yeah, the stone aquamarine, I, I feel like that has something to do with Aquarius too. I could be mistaken, but anyway, for those who are into crystal work and all that, aquamarine, maybe maybe uh, do some channeling of messages while, while you're holding that gem. Anyway, uh, please do like, share, subscribe, Pisces. Let me know in the comments below what resonates for you, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Happy birthday, bye!